Hi, welcome back to another One Chart Lesson. Nobody Knows You When You're Down and Out is an old blues traditional song that Eric Clapton did a cover of on his very famous uh, MTV Unplugged recording. And that's kind of what made the song famous, I guess, to a lot of people. But it's a very simple song uh, in, in that it's got one chord progression that repeats all the way through the song, which you've just heard. And we're going to do the solo as well. I'm going to break down the solo, the finger picking for that that chord progression as well. We're going to do it all. So download your chart. There's a separate one for the solo and a separate one for the uh, intro sort of picking section that you just saw. Let's get started. The chord progression. Without the picking, just the chords are C, E7, A7, played like this rather than this. And D minor, back to A7, back to D minor. Then we walk up to F. Then we do a little F sharp diminished kind of voicing there. And there's another way to do that, which I'll show you a bit later on, but that's the way Eric Clapton does it. Adds that F sharp bass note on top of that, making it an F sharp diminished. And then C down to A7 A again. Then we go to a D7 rather than a D minor and a G7. And that takes us back to the start. So again, C, E7, A7, D minor, A7, D minor, F, F sharp diminished, C down to A7, D7, G7. That is the chord progression. Now, as far as this picking goes, it's a bit of a kind of a claw hammer technique, which basically means that your thumb is taking your bass notes, your several fingers are taking rhythm notes or chord notes, alternating with your thumb. And sometimes at the same time as your thumb. But what I'll do, probably the best way to explain this is to play it very, very slowly according to this tab and not talk so much. One thing I will say is that at the very start in that first bar, you'll see a little TR marked above about the third or fourth note in. It's a trill. And that means that you hammer on from the open G string to the first fret. And you do that as many times as you can kind of fit in that beat. It doesn't matter how many times you do it, but what matters is when you come out of it to the next note. Apart from that, <clears throat> I'm just gonna do what I can to play this kind of slowly and accurately according to the tab. So the very first note is outside the first bar. It's kind of a pickup note. So it's one, two, three, four. back to the start. That's it. Take your time with that and, and just get it sitting comfortably because you want to be able to play that through without um, thinking about what chord's coming next because that progression just repeats and repeats and repeats. So you want to actually get it flowing nicely. And if you're not super accurate with every single note there, it doesn't really matter as long as you get the gist of it and it, and it sits well. My opinion is that you can spend a lot of time trying to get things exactly note perfect Whereas if you get it 95% accurate, it'll take much less time and still sound just as good. Once you do that, we're into the solo. Now the solo is like this. So breaking down this solo very slowly, we're doing this run up through this scale. 
<clears throat> now what that means is that it's, it's written out on your tab, but I'm gonna kind of guide you through which fingers to use. And first finger on the third fret A string, when you hit that five and slide up to seven, don't linger on the five, slide straight up to seven with your third finger, like that. Then your first finger goes over to the D string, fifth fret, third finger on the seventh fret. Again, same thing on your G string, you play the fifth fret here, hit the seventh fret and slide straight up to nine. Then with your second finger, take the eighth fret on the B string and finish on the tenth fret and cut it short. So it's like this. Play that note again. Come down to the eighth fret and hammer back onto 10. Back down to eight. Back down to nine on the G string. Then he moves, Eric moves his third finger down to the seventh fret. Down to five, to the first finger. Seven on the D. And then with his first finger on the fifth fret of the G string, he hammers on to the sixth fret. And then finishes up on the seventh fret of the D string with his third finger. So all up like this. Next section where the chord goes to D minor, we're changing our scale a little bit and we're moving him into this sixth fret B string which is an F note. All right, so six, five, six, five, seven, five, seven, and that can be a hammer and pull off. Then move to the seventh fret of the D string, but come, again, don't linger on that, come straight down to the fifth fret, sliding down. That's the end of the next phrase. Then we slide up, we head up to the 12th fret um, A string and go 12, 10, 12, over onto the D string. Back to 10. Little blues note in there. So that little slide down from the 13 to the 12. Then you take your second and third fingers, and you slide up just one fret or so to land on the ninth fret G string and the eighth fret B string. And then just slide that shape down, those three frets. And I hear another note in there somewhere that goes, but you don't need to play that, it's just And the last little bit, which I, I love the ending to this, is very playful. He slides up to seven on the D string with your second finger. And you can use any fingers here, but these are the most comfortable, I think, to use. And the third finger on the B string, both on the seventh fret. So you go. All right, so make sure you get the kind of timing for that right. Keep going up with the same fingers, slide up to 12 on the D, 12 on the B, and now we're just articulating this note on the B string clearly by itself. That little phrase, I, I do, do just love it. That's how we end it. So here it is, once through, start to finish.
beautiful solo, really tasteful, simple, elegant phrasing. It's, you know, it's Eric Clapton and he really does it beautifully here like he usually does. One last thing I almost forgot to include was the ending riff that Eric Clapton does at the end of this song. So you go through this chord progression, you chorus out. On the last time through the chord progression, when you get to the, um, the D7, nobody wants you, you hold that for two bars instead of one. Nobody wants you, and you do the same with the G7. So it's D7 for two bars instead of one, G7 for two bars instead of one. And then the band stops and he plays this riff. Now what he's doing there really slowly, I've included this in the last two bars on your chart, there is this riff. It's called the outro riff, but it's, it's not connected to the chord progression the, the way you would logically read it, but it's how I explained it. So last time through, it's two bars of D7, two bars of G7, then you stop and play. So, start on the 6th fret B string, bend it up, stop it at the top of the bar, at the top of the bend, come back to 6, back to 4 on the B string, 5 to 3 on the G string, then 5, 4, 3 on the D string, then drop down to the 1st fret and hammer on to the 2nd fret from there. And cut that note short so it's... And then from there, you play a B9 chord and slide it up to a C9 to finish. So. And that's the ending. Um, so that's it. That's the entire song. Practice that to your heart's content. Go over that loop, get those chords right, fit that solo in. Uh, you can thank me later. Thanks for watching. See you here again soon.